It's okay, Mom. I got this. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Joey with Mick Nerdy Makes, and welcome back. My mom isn't feeling well today, so I'm filling in. Today, we're going to talk about fixing fashion. The fast fashion industry causes billions of pounds of, of clothing a year to get sent to the landfill. So how do we fix that? Telling everyone to stop buying fast fashion isn't an option. Some people can't afford to buy from other places. Some people don't have time to make their own clothing. Or they don't know how to sew. So we decided to make a video that teaches people how to alter or mend their clothing to be what they want it to be instead of throwing it away. My mom is really happy that other cause tubers volunteer to help because they love sustainability as much as she does. Today she's joined by Lena Pibrek, Shannon from Shannon Makes, and Rachel from Labrica Loose. <laughs> Loose. Hi everyone, I'm Lena, my channel is Lena Pitbreck, and I'll be showing you some ways to repair holes in knitted fabrics. I'll start off with a simple woven darn for some socks, and then I'll show you how to do an invisible fix for a hole in a knitted jumper. friends, I'm Shannon Makes and for this fashion fix I'm going to be giving this old backpack a second life with some basic repairs. This backpack was rescued out of a trash heap. Structurally it's very sound but the fake leather straps on the front are quite literally disintegrating which is probably why it was thrown away. First, a trip to my local store's scrap bin. Then, marking the placement of the old straps before removing them. With all the fake leather removed, straps could be used to measure and cut new ones. The only parts that were kept were the small bits with the snaps which would fortunately be hidden behind the new leather. The long straps on the front were made with two layers stitched together for extra strength. Then the new straps were simply sewn back onto the backpack following the placement of the old ones.
And just like that, this diamond in the rough went from dumpster drab to backpack chic. This fashion fix involves turning this sweater into a sweater vest. This sweater came to me secondhand, and I kept it because I love the color, but the sleeves just never fit right. Based on the size label, I think this is actually a children's garment, and while the torso fits pretty well, the sleeves are far too short. But I absolutely adore the color, and so I decided to cut the sleeves off. Don't worry, they're being repurposed as part of my fantasy bounding outfit. When I cut the sleeves off, I made sure to keep the factory serged edge, which I trimmed short, folded under, and stitched down. Keeping the serged edge meant that I didn't have to worry about adding a binding and making the edges unnecessarily bulky. This simple fashion fix took me less than 10 minutes and allowed me to keep and use a garment that had been languishing in my closet. I'm Rachel of La Brica Liz, and today I'm replacing the patches on a rayon knit dressing gown. I love lounging around the house in this drapey jersey wrap. When the wheels of my desk chair tore holes in it near the hem, I originally patched them with a couple of antique floral appliques. But my partner mistook them for pieces of masking tape, so I knew I had to replace them. Here you can see one of the holes and the stitches that held the jonquil applique on. I didn't have anything that matched the deep red of the rayon jersey, but I did have a scrap of black Alençon lace that I could cut some motifs from to use for patches. When possible, I like to use hand sewing thread for a project like this. It's pre-waxed and pre-cut to exactly the right length. I buy mine from Judith M. Millinery Supply, but there are many vendors if you search on the word silamide. I laid the robe out flat on a table to pin the motifs in place and then whip stitched around the edge. A quick pass with a steam iron removed any puckers. And here's the finished dressing gown with the new patches. Do you think I've replaced masking tape with ink blotches? My mom wants me to say that her alteration is more of an intermediate level, but wanted to keep other ideas for fixing things as well. I love this old skirt of mine, but the lace just keeps falling apart and is full of holes, so let's fix it. I wanted to keep the stretchy waistband for ease of wearability, and typically I wear my skirts instead of up here at my natural waist down in between my hips. I measured the stretch of the waistband. Tier one is going to be double the stretch of the waistband, tier two is triple, and tier four is quadruple. I split the skirt up one of the side panels so I could lay it out flat and then essentially created three inch strips of insertion lace. I backed each of the three inch strips with muslin for stability. This muslin is also going to serve as the rest of the skirt in its entirety, but you can really use anything. I just chose the muslin because I like the color and that's what I had on hand. I sewed each of the strips of the insertion lacing onto the body of the rest of the skirt. I kept them separate for now because I also wanted to add these pin tucks into the very last tier. Basically my idea with the skirt was to create kind of a history bounding look. I wanted the nods to the Victorian and Edwardian petticoats but a functional outerwear garment. Once all the pin tucks were finished it was time to iron them flat and then pin all of the layers together to sew them into one giant circle. Once I had each of my circles, I split them into quarters and then gathered up each section to fit into the quarter space in the next section. After that, I finished up the waistband and the hem of the skirt and it was ready to wear. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out and I love that I have a nice history bounding skirt to wear. Man, those pin tucks really just make the garment, don't they? Thank you all for watching, and the best can be found in my description. Grandma also says that this was so fun, and she wants to do this again. Let us know if you want to see more.
make some fashion videos. Don't forget to join us tomorrow. For the panel, we're using recycled materials and costuming. Hope to see you there. Bye.